Today we are going to learn about non-parametric test. The main non-parametric test which we are going to see is chi-square test. Now earlier we have seen about t-tests and z-tests. These t-tests and z-tests are particularly important when we are testing any data which is interval or ratio scale. These are the tests which are also you know, based on the fact that the distribution is, is on a bell-shaped curve. However, when we have to test nominal data or ordinal data, we use non-parametric test. So remember, for any interval or ratio scale, we use parametric test, which is t-test or z-test. However, to test nominal data or ordinal data, uh, remember you know, data when you have yes, no, male, female, those kind of data. So nominal or ordinal data, we use non-parametric test. The most commonly used non-parametric test is chi-square test. However, you have to remember that these tests are less powerful as compared to parametric test. So let's start with chi-square test. This is the only uh, non-parametric test which is covered in the scope of our lectures. So let's see an example. A data of class of 54 students who appeared for exam and whether they attended classes or skipped classes. So this is the data. So we have people who have attended. So the data is kind of nominal where you just have whether they attended or they did not attend. We don't have the data as to how many classes they have attended. Maybe some students have attended some class. Maybe some students have not, uh, not attended entirely. But here we have just, you know, if a student has attended, he will get yes. If he has not attended, he will get no. Based on that, and again, the result in terms of pass and fail is also like he must he is just passed, then it's an yes, or he has failed, it's just a no. So this is the data which we are going to analyze using chi-square. You remember that there is only two variable here, that is pass and fail, and there is only two variable or data point attended or skipped. So this is why it is a kind of nominal scale. Now let's uh, you know kind of uh, see so this is the data so students who have attended and passed is 25 so students who have attended and failed is 6 so total 60 31 students student who have skipped the class and passes 8 student who have skipped the class and failed is 15 so total 23 students who have skipped the class and if you see the overall number of students it's 54 so we will analyze this data using chi square test let's move forward so the first step of any testing is defining the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is there is no difference in the results of student who attended the class and they are passing. So our null hypothesis is that there is no difference in result based on whether you have attended or skipped the class. And the alternate hypothesis is a student who attended the class has different password percentage. So we move forward. The step two. Okay, so the first step was uh, defining the null hypothesis. The second step would be calculation of degree of freedom. Now, this is our null hypothesis. This is our data. So these are the two rows. Hence, row minus one is two minus one. And these are the two columns, right? So column is vertical, rows is horizontal. Always remember that. So these are the two columns again two minus one so one into one is equals to one so degree of freedom for this particular example would be one suppose some data is two into three you know two rows into three then it will be two minus one is one and three minus uh three minus one is two so two into one degree of freedom will be two so always remember degree of freedom is row minus one into column minus one let's move forward thus so the first step was Defin defining the null and the alternate hypothesis. The second step was calculation of degree of freedom. The third step would be calculation of expected val values. So this is the actual value which we have uh, got from the data points. Now we try to calculate the expected value. So for each of these columns, we are calculating the expected value. How do we calculate is basically suppose we have to calculate this value. So this into this divided by this so if we have to calculate the expected value of 
student who have attended and passed so it would be 33 into 31 by 54 similarly if you have to calculate this so it will be again uh, 21 into 31 divided by 54 if you have to calculate this it's 33 into 23 by 54 if you have to calculate this it's 21 into 23 by 54 so this is how we calculate the expected value so this is the final figure which we get after the calculation for expected value so this is the actual so actually if you see students who attended and passed is 25 and the expected value is a student who attended and passed should be 18.95 so the third step in chi-square test is calculation of expected values moving forward the fourth step is calculation of what we call is chi-square value so this is basically summation of observed minus expectation expected raised to the power 2 divided by the expected value so i have put both the actual as well as observed as well as expected value and here is the table of calculation so observed value is 25 expected is 18.95 so the difference between observed and expected is 6.05 right for this uh, so for each of these you know cells we have calculated the observed minus expected and then we have squared it why we have squared it because some values will be negative so once we square it it will become all the values will be positive and then we have kind of this is the sum and then we have divided it so 36.6 .6 divided by the expected value expected value is 18.95 so 1.9 comes 2.6 3.0 4.1 and the total you get is 11.7 so the fourth step is, is when we calculate the chi-square value, where is chi-square value is observed minus expected raised to the power 2 divided by expected. So you have got observed, expected, we take the you know, difference, we square it so that it removes the minus sign and then we divide it by the expected value we get this once we have calculated for all the cells we just sum it so this is our chi square value 11.7 so the first step is defining the null hypothesis the second step is when we actually calculate the uh, when we calculate a degree of freedom the third is when we calculate the expected value table and the fourth step is when we calculate the chi square value moving forward now the last step is when we see the value in the table so if you see the result we have got is 11.7 now we have calculated this 11.7 as our chi square value now we will go and match the chi it with the chi square table so this is the degree of freedom one and this is the statistical significance of 0 0.05 which is generally taken so 3.84 what we have calculated the value 11.7 this comes between uh, p value of 0.001 to p value of 0 0.001 which means that since the calculated p value of 11.7 uh, responds to even p less than 0 0.001 hence the null hypothesis is rejected which means the alternated hypothesis is accepted which means in the, that the there is a difference between passing rate of students who attended the class and students who did not attend the class so this brings to the end of chi-square so this is so step one is when you form a hypothesis step two is when you calculate the degree of freedom step three is when you calculate the expected values step four is when you square uh, calculate the chi-square value and step five is when you match with the table and accept or reject the hypothesis now we are going to learn about choosing the right tool for analysis in biostats we have learned so many tests in terms of uh, statistical tools regression tools z test t test pair t test unpair t test and chi square test but which tool to use in which situation and there's a lot of mcqs being asked on this so basically this is what we have we can have a nominal data ordinal data or interval or ratio data 
and what we would have in terms of sample is different in proportions one or two means association predicting time survival and predicting value of on variable based on other variables so these are the different um, you know objectives or the data which we have and this is the kind of data we will have now if we have nominal or ordinal data and the difference of proportion is what we have to calculate p square use chi square test so for any nominal and ordinal data for all practical purpose i mean all what you can do is uh, based on difference of proportion you can calculate and that is chi square test is what you will use now if you have one or two means and you have interval or ratio data t test or z test is used z test is used when sample size is less in greater than 100 t test is used when sample size is less than 100 now if you have to calculate association and we have got ordinal or nominal data we use spearsman ratio and if we have interval or ratio we use pearson coefficient which is r if we have to predict time survival again that will be a interval or ratio data only we use cox regression so predicting survival time we use cox regression now if you have to predict value on variables based on other variables then we use logistic regression in terms of nominal data and simple and multiple regression in terms of interval or ratio data so this is a table which will help you decide which test to use in what situation again to summarize if you have a nominal and ordinal data and you want to do analysis the only uh, analysis analytical tool of help will be chi square if you want to predict variables uh, based on other variable then for a nominal or ordinal data logistic regression is the choice now if you have interval and ratio data you use t test or z test z test if the sample size is more than 100 if you want to predict association of variables then spearman coefficient is used for ordinal nominal data or interval ratio is used for pearson uh, interval or ratio data is there then use pearson coefficient if you have to predict time survival cox regression is the method of choice right and if you want to predict uh, the value of a variable based on other variables simple or multiple regression is the data of choice